Good morning and welcome to Lafayette Avenue Presbyterian Church here in our 175th year of ministry. Wherever you are, whether you're meeting in our safely distanced in-person worship or you're in your pajamas enjoying breakfast, wherever you may find yourself today, we are so glad that you took time to join our live service on Facebook or if you're joining us later in the week or afternoon on our YouTube videos. We're so glad that you're with us this morning. We want to bring a couple of announcements to you about activities and events going on in our faith community. Race and the Gospel is our current series, Facebook Live and Zoom are ways that you can join in on Tuesday evenings starting at 6.30 p.m. If you would like a Zoom link so that you can enter the conversation, uh, you can reach out to me, Micah, at elmwoodvillage.org, elmwoodjesus.org, and we will be glad to send you a personal invite. You can always join by way of Facebook Live on our Facebook page and enter comments uh, to be a part of the conversation that way as well. We want to wish a wonderful, happy birthday this past week to Lottie County, who turned 97 this past week. Uh, we have such a history of faithfulness that we can look back on and look forward to uh, for Bob and Lottie County, and we celebrate her birthday this week. Uh, so, uh, so much faithfulness represented in that family, and uh, we celebrate with her uh, the joy of life and long life. We want to invite you again, if you're here in our in-person worship, uh, to practice safety in the way that we exit our building. Make sure you exit row by row and that we do our talking after the service outside. This is a way that we can keep our building safe in this time. Lastly, in this time, we are supporting our food pantries as we always have. But as you know, uh, due to COVID-19, there is a greater reality of need than uh, in a long time. Uh, some uh, food pantries' uh, needs have doubled. I've had conversation with those where needs have tripled. We've even had uh, moments when local food pantries have run out um, of resources. So we ask you to give what you can. We support the local pantries here. Parkside, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Friends of the Night People. Uh, one of the requests from Friends of the Night People to keep in mind is that individual bags... Uh, make it safer for them to give to those uh, in need of the most vulnerable at this time. So if you're donating, keeping that in mind for Friends of the Night people would be something very helpful. Thank you so much for your contribution in this time. Um, as we give to the Lord and as we serve our community in this time of need together. And so at this time, in this moment, in this place, connected by the Holy Spirit wherever we are, we gather together to worship
our call to worship this morning. Eternal God, you are present with us throughout our lives, even when others plot to do us harm. May we learn to live together in unity that in all we do, we may sing your praises now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, speak to us through your word today. We are listening and we ask that we may be attentive, that our lives will be changed, that our hearts will be changed, that you would speak to the very depths of our soul, and that the way we live this week would truly say that we want to be more like Jesus. And we know this is only possible by the power of your Spirit doing only what you can do, being what only you can be in our hearts and lives and community. And so we ask that you speak through your word and that the church will be listening today. And we ask this in your awesome name. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is Genesis chapter 45, beginning with verse 1. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed 
or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay you shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. While Benjamin wept upon his neck and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God this morning. Our second scripture reading is found in the prophet Isaiah, chapter 56, beginning with verse 1. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel. I will gather others to them, because besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord this morning. Thanks be to God. Our prophetic text in Isaiah describes God as the one who gathers the outcasts. The acceptance of the foreigners is pictured as they are welcomed on God's holy mountain. Explained by Isaiah the prophet with this proclamation. My house shall be a house of prayer for all peoples. Not just the established or those who have conquered the land. A house of prayer for all peoples. Notice in our text today, the typically outcast are specifically mentioned it's apparently not enough for the prophet Isaiah to say that all are welcome. Because mentioned in our text are the others, the ones that are not yet gathered, aliens to this kind of acceptance and redemption. They are mentioned today, preparing the way for this picture of worship with all peoples. Growing up in a large family with six brothers and sisters, we often would meet people who would see um, all of us with various ages, and one special friend that we made was a nurse who visited our home often after my papa, uh, upon having health conditions, moved in with us. 
And as she came weekly to assist my grandfather, she got to know the names of the Dowling siblings. Well, she got to know us. There were certain ones that she would smile at or chuckle at at different ways that we were called when she would enter our home. She got a little bit accustomed to the Dowling routine of seven children in one home and the homeschool schedule that was set for that day. Upon Christmas time, she decided to gift us these lovely stockings. I mean, these look like the real Santa Claus, fuzzy white and red Christmas stockings filled with goodies for all of us. We were delighted. But when she was purchasing these items or getting them from Santa Claus, whatever your belief system may be, she did not know our names. So she put descriptions on these stockings. One was the oldest sister. One was the baby sister. One was the tallest brother. One said the youngest brother. And mine said the other son. I was 11 years old at a little bit of a dramatic time in my life. The fourth born, right in the middle, three older siblings, three younger. So I took that to heart. I was just the other son. What was my significance in this family? I even found myself, when I had just learned the guitar, to write a little song about this tragedy in my life, being called the other son. Perhaps I had a very small taste of what it means to be othered. But this is who are welcomed in today's worship, in our scripture text. Those who have been othered in great ways. The alien and outcast are called to prayer and to holding fast the covenant of keeping the Sabbath. A question we might ask is, what is the preparation for inclusive worship? The beginning verse gives us a clue and calls us into the how of this is done. It reads, thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. Justice work is required if we are to worship the Lord as prescribed here. A house of prayer for all people means a foundation of justice and inclusivity has been laid. A vision has been set forth and laid out even in failings. We fail forward as we learn to mimic the God who gathers the outcasts. This means thought is given to the very language that we use. How we provide food. What zip codes get included in the food that we provide? The very focus of our communities and our gatherings, our ecumenical relationships, and the very curriculum we use. Does it speak of welcome? The worship style itself in a church should be examined as well as how well do we listen to our neighbor. This calls us back to our confessions and creeds and brutal histories of exclusion. To lament and learn from history instead of making excuses. We are doing the work the prophet calls us toward because as the scripture reads today, salvation and deliverance will be revealed. So it is not enough to prepare a house of worship from the inside. It must be demonstrated on the outside, in the streets and neighborhoods, on the east side, on the west side, and under the bypass. The maintaining of justice means that we protest and we, re we resist injustice. This preparation for inclusive worship involves every part of our daily living. Prayer, going to the grocery store, protest, 
cries out for social change, how we eat, how we vote, who we notice, and who we hear. That our very lives speak welcome to the outcast. It's not enough to print it on our brochure. Our very living and worshiping must say, As the scriptures say today, because liberation is coming. Are we living our lives in the expectation that the way we worship is going to bring in, usher in, the liberation of God? If not, we need a new vision. Let's get busy. Let us seek prayer and inclusive practices that widen our circles. Recently, one of our first in-person gatherings have been our young people with our slushy circles on Friday afternoons. We started with just four or five students, and then we challenged them to bring a friend to help us widen our circle. The very next week, we had 10 students gathered there, and they decided that we should meet again. An event that was supposed to be a one-time event became three weeks running, and over 15 students have been a part of this gathering. Widening our circles not only brings more people in, but speaks of the liberation and salvation that our, our prophet speaks of today because we care for all peoples. We practice inclusivity in our relationships. And like God who gathered the outcast, we recognize our duty to call in all peoples. Let us recognize righteousness and justice as a central principle of Scripture and seek to follow our Creator God in the way we live for liberation of all. How is our local jail treating children of God? How do our homebound fare in assisted living communities? Does our local community consider the vulnerable? How do we, as a family of faith, demonstrate our confession and Holy Scripture today that reads, And the foreigner I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer? Does our house of prayer proclaim outcast welcome? May our prayers always have feet. Amen. We invite you this morning, wherever you are, to join us in a time of prayer. As always, you may leave prayer requests in the comments section. As part of our virtual bulletin, we check it on Sundays and later in the week so that we may pray for you during the week. Please feel free to lift up prayer requests spoken in that way, and as always, as we lift up unspoken prayer requests. We want to especially remember today our president and the loss of his brother, all those that are affected by COVID-19, from the homebound to those that don't have family and friends nearby, small businesses, all the way to the post office, the hungry, those who are looking for work, those that are on the front lines providing care, those who have families that are overwhelmed with responsibilities, and all who suffer injustice in our community from immigrant hostility to forms of racism, homophobia, classism, sexism, and the many ways that groups of people can be othered. To those who are mourning death right now, an incredible loss. To those who are visiting hospitals and praying for the best. For all those in a variety of situations and contexts, we lift up this morning in prayer. Let us pray together. Compassionate God, we know we can bring everything to you, but at times we need reminders 
that you truly are our refuge and our strength. Our very present help in time of trouble. Our great God, our great shepherd, our king, our redeemer. The one we can lean on in times of trouble. Help us become answers to prayers this week. As there are so many that are suffering in a variety of ways who need healing emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally. Lord, be with us and all the unspoken requests. We lift them up to you. You know every heart. You know every situation. Lord, you are our creator. You have given us life and breath and creation to worship you and enjoy each other. Help us do so in a way that does not harm others. Help us think of others in the way that we live our life. Help us practice welcome and inclusivity. Even to those who might naturally be our enemies in society's uh, lines that are drawn. We know these are evil as you've called us to recognize each other as siblings. As all as beloved children of God. We lift up the hungry. Those who don't have work and don't know how tomorrow is going to work out. We find many of us in those situations as we pray for the end of COVID-19 at a time when we don't know when that end may be. Lord, we admit we have no choice right now but to trust in you. So help us do what we would have liked to have done from the beginning is to trust in you with all our heart. Lean not in our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you, knowing you will direct our paths, that we truly can be anxious for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known unto God, and the very peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. As we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever. Amen. At this time, we invite you to give. There are four different ways you can give. If you are in person this morning, we have an offering plate uh, seated at the table so that you can safely give. If you are in person worship, on our Facebook virtual bulletin, there's a link where you can give. As always, you can go to our website, elmwithjesus.org, and give that way through the PayPal link. Or you can mail us a check at 875 Elmwood Avenue, zip code 14222. However you choose to give this morning, may we all do so as an act of worship today, recognizing that all belongs to God as we seek to be good stewards of the Lord's church. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, it is with thanksgiving that we receive these funds. And in the very giving, we recognize it as an act of worship. May these funds be well kept and well used for the building up of your reign, your light and your love in this very community and beyond. And we ask all this in your precious name. Amen. And so now, in our 175th year as a congregation, may everything we do and say and represent to this community say, outcasts, welcome. And it starts with you. So go, let the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen.
Thank you. 